Hello and welcome to episode 45 of the Tea and Possibilities podcast. I am Nikki and this is a podcast all about knitting, crochet and making all the things here in East London. You can find me on Instagram at hippie underscore Nikki. I'm Nikki Hippie on Ravelry and if you search for Tea and Possibilities under the groups tab on Ravelry you will find our group right there. I post a few quick links in the description box below, but if you are looking for full show notes, I do host those on my blog, a link to which will also be just down there. As always, I would like to kick off by saying a massive thank you to my viewers. Thank you if this is your first time with the podcast, I really appreciate you giving it a shot. And if you are one of my viewers that comes back every episode, I really, really appreciate you doing that. Thank you so much, and I hope you have your tea with you. Um, today's tea is another one from my adventure box from T2. It just keeps giving, guys. Um, I will come to this, but this week has been kind of a crazy week and I haven't had much tea. And today I really fancied something herbal. There's something about herbal teas or green teas that just make me pause. Um, I feel like with black teas, um, you know, particularly in the morning, I have it as my get up and go drink, the way other people use coffee, I guess and I kind of drink so much black tea, it's almost automatic. Whereas when I take the time to drink a herbal tea, there's something about the smell, even of green tea, it's kind of got a, an outdoorsy, grassy smell, and it just makes me stop for two minutes, which is incredibly needed this week. There are quite a few green teas in my box, but I went for the Sencha. And what it says is that the beautiful emerald green leaves produce a delicate aroma and a sweet, smooth and grassy flavour. Um, it actually kind of makes me feel like I shouldn't have brewed this in my black Cursed Child mug. Um, I just kind of grabbed it, it's one of my favourite mugs, for obvious reasons. And um, it smells good and I kind of feel like I'm missing out on the colour a little bit. So here we go, first sip. That is a really good green tea. Mmm, that is really good. It is exactly what it says on the label. It's quite grassy, it's quite fresh. Um, it's, again, fantastically grey weather out. Last weekend was beautiful and blazing hot and I actually got a little bit pink in the sun. Um, but this is, despite the weather, making me think of spring again because it smells as I said, it smells fresh and grassy and it smells just like it tastes. I think I might have to get some of this. This is a really good green tea. So yeah, as I alluded to there, this week has been nuts. Um, I have had a couple of weeks that have been a bit relentless. This week in particular has just been chock full of errands to run, so if I've been at work um, all day, I've then had to kind of go and do stuff after work. I'm trying to stick to a very um, structured running schedule, so even if I don't have an errand to run, I have running to do. Yeah, so this week is kind of nuts, and today I have just got home from teaching this morning, and I... Um, very quickly um, doing some filming because I wanted to sit down with you guys and then this afternoon I will be meeting friends to go and see the Chamber of Secrets um, or Harry Potter um, at the Royal Albert Hall with a live orchestra. I saw Philosopher's Stone last year and it was a beautiful experience so we're going to see Chamber of Secrets tonight, get a pizza afterwards. And then of course we'll be sorting out our tickets to see Prisoner of Azkaban at um, the end of the year. I think it's on in October and it's just a really nice thing to look forward to. We are definitely going to see all eight films live, I hope, and it's just a lovely experience. If you can get tickets to see anything live at the Royal Albert Hall with the live orchestra, I heartily recommend it. It's an absolutely lovely, lovely thing to do. I really, really enjoy it. But yeah, tomorrow is my first kind of chilled out day, so I'm very much looking forward to that, and you can probably understand now why I've reached for the green tea. Then of course, um, next weekend I will be going away, it is Rich's birthday, it's the big 3-0 for Rich, so we will be going away for a little while, and I will hopefully get a lot more knitting done then, so heads up, it has been crazy. <laughs> 
But enough about that, we'll come, we'll come to all of that in, uh, later in the episode. Before we dive into Whipped Up, I just want to remind you about the Renit Cal. Um, we are, gosh, I think well over halfway through now. It started on the 17th of March while I was at Edinburgh Yarn Festival and it will run till the 18th of May. So I've still got time, guys. I've still got time to finish <laughs> what I'm working on. And the idea behind it is that you find a pattern that you have knit before, that you really enjoyed, that maybe you wanted to try again with modifications, you know, just wanted to knit it in a different colour or crochet, despite the name of this cow, crochet does qualify. And that's the only prerequisite. You have to have knit it before or crocheted it before. That's it. That's all you have to do. Share it with us in the chatter thread. I think um, around the beginning of May, I'm going to open the kind of entry thread, but this is also um, a cowl where you don't have to finish. So I will probably leave it to a week or two before the deadline. So all you have to do is share your project and a little story behind each one. Um, if you've done more than one project for this cow, please do put them in as two separate entries and then you get a couple of more goes at the prize draw. And then I think I will be pulling out prizes because I now have a prize draw um, for prize drawings and I'll be having a little rummage through there and picking out some fun stuff. I think I'm going to go for three winners. Three seems like a magic good number. So um, yeah, keep an eye out. We're coming very close to the end of the cowl. And let's see how much I have done on my <laughs> knit along project in Whipped Up. First of all, I want to say thank you. You guys were absolutely lovely about my, um, my very first sock last week. You were so excited for me. I also had a few messages from people who said they were going to give it a go using the Meanwhile at the Castle videos and I really really hope that it worked out for you because it really did click for me. And honestly I am still kind of riding that high of I knit a sock and the high only gets higher. Look at that! I got a faux! And not just any faux guys, it is a sock faux. Last um, episode I had my first hoe. In fact, I think it was this one. <laughs> and this week I have got my first faux. Um, as I pointed out last week, I actually spotted a drop stitch on this one, um, which is why I've got the stitch marker just here hanging onto it. Um, given where it is, I will not be ripping back. I'm just going to put a little stitch in that to hold it in place. Um, and I did have a go at making them matching, but let's see if I can hold them up together. You can probably see that they don't quite match. It's easier to see on the toe. So this is the toe I've just finished. And this is the first toe. So I'm about four rounds out. So actually wearing them, they probably, they probably look fairly matchy-matchy. Matchy-matchy uh, doesn't really bother me when it comes to socks. Um, so that's absolutely fine. And these are going to be house socks because they do fit, as I said last week, um, but unfortunately they fit perfectly, whereas socks need to be a tiny bit smaller than your foot in order to really cinch in and fit really well. So these are going to be my around the house socks. And, you know, I'm going to need them because we're back to grey, cold weather. I literally dug out my sandals on Saturday evening, they had been all packed away and I wore them on Sunday and I got a little bit pink just here um, because I didn't realise quite how sunny it was and Monday I continued with that theme and I went out in my sandals, I went to, to work and froze. It was so cold and I had my poor little feet were out under the desk just freezing slowly and I only had one sock in my bag and I genuinely was tempted to just like pull it onto one foot, half an hour later swap it. I mean, it, mm, it probably would have made me look a bit bonkers, so I didn't do it. <laughs> but now I have two, and I'm genuinely considering keeping these at work <laughs> for when it gets really cold and my feet just need a little warm because these are perfect. Um, my nan really, really liked this yarn. Um, she actually wants to knit a jumper out of it. So I think that'd be quite fun. The, I wonder how the stripe sequence would look though. I don't think it would work quite as well because you wouldn't really have any stripes. It'd be quite 
because it's much wider. So maybe I'll try and find her a self-striping in similar colours. But um, I sat down and did my kitchen up before I filmed this uh, video and I'm just having a look now and my second kitchener is definitely much neater than my first. Um, I've also got way too long a tail, I don't know why I cut that much off. And I'm looking at my gussets and they are so neat. I am so proud of my gussets, guys. Um, the gusset on this one, the knit two together one was fine, but the um, SSK one was kind of a bit schlubby. Um, I was trying a new way to SSK and it didn't really work for me. So I went back to the traditional way and oh, honestly, who knew the joy you could get just from a neat gusset decrease? Who knew? I'm just going to have a look to see, because I know that the holes at the heel are kind of a, a little bit of an issue that people have mentioned. And, I don't know if you can see, I am proud to report there is no hole. Um, and I can't take credit for any of this because I literally followed the Meanwhile at the Castle video. What I have been doing is popping notes into a Ravelry project page. I am calling it Operation Sock Drawer, um, very much inspired by the Knitmore Girls. And that is where I intend to keep all of my kind of notes about my sock knitting until I can get my perfect recipe. Um, so yeah, if you are curious, there's a link in that project page to the first in the video how-to series by Meanwhile at the Castle. Um, and there's also my notes about how I'm doing my sock. But I'm literally, I'm just looking at it and I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of the fact that I managed it neat on Magic Loop. Um, you know, there's a little bit of here and there, a little bit of meh, where I probably didn't pull tight enough. But on the whole, Magic Loop was good. The heels are good. I'm really, really happy with this. Really, really happy. And I am going to cast on a new pair immediately. But I am going to go down needle size. I am going to stick with all my numbers, my current count, and just go down a needle size. So these were on 2.75s, and I'm going to have a go on 2.5s. I did actually pop to Wild and Woolly to pick up my needles, but I'll show you all that later. Also, this is how much I've got left. I have absolutely loads. So I think what I might do tonight when I get home is put a square on my Cozy Memories blanket and then I'm going to wind some off for my advent swap at the end of the year. I have got a Quality Street tin um, that I took home from Cornwall at Christmas. So Rich's mum had a big um, quality Street tin of chocolates, as you do at Christmas. And I asked if I could have the empty tin, and I was going to keep threads in it, but I actually think, what better than a Christmas Quality Street tin to keep your advent yarn in? So I'm going to wind some of that into little balls for that, and then whatever is left will go into my granny stripe. But that is tons left. I am really, really happy with that. I easily got a pair of socks out of that uh, skein of West Yorkshire spinners. So heartily, heartily recommend it. The only other thing I have been really working on this week is my um, hat. This is the Smart Hat by Soldier Divine and it's in Willow and Lark um, Woodland. It took me a minute there. I kept wanting to go Alpaca Tweed and no, it's not Alpaca Tweed. It's Woodland, um, but it is Alpaca Wool with a kind of tweedy fleck in it. So that's probably where I'm getting Alpaca Tweed from. Both of these projects, by the way, have been living in this little bag, which uh, Rachel of the Crafty Historian made me. It just means that when I'm out and about, I've got two projects to choose from. So I can either just go round and round on a sock, and then when I hit, you know, a tricksy bit, like any decreases or anything like that, I can pick up my hat instead. Um, or if I'm watching a film and I can't count to four, which we discovered while watching Tomb Raider, I cannot do, um, I can swap over onto my sock. Um, but yeah, this is just going to be a very simple ribbed hat. It's going to be quite long because the brim folds up. And I think this is going to look really beautiful and rustic in this yarn. It's just a little bit of um, rib island at the moment. It's It's got to be about 10 centimetres longer before I can start the crown decreases. Um, I feel like I've been knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting and I've made maybe one centimetre's progress. So I think what I might do is get this to the crown decreases before I go ahead and cast on a second sock. 
while doing my tidy up, I actually discovered that I have a lot of alpaca yarn. So I've got a lot more woodland. I have a sweater quantity in orange um, that I've decided not to knit a sweater out of because just working with the yarn it is beautiful and it's going to be so warm. But it's just not for me. So I think what I'm going to do is queue up um, a few hats. I'm going to go for fairly simple patterns um, so that I they can be good out and about knitting and I don't have to carry a pattern with me. And I will just work my way through my alpaca stash and we should have a lot of hats by the end of the year, which would be pretty cool. Now the last thing I have to show you, I feel sort of ashamed of <laughs> because not so long ago, as in last episode, I talked about how many whips I have and how I desperately need to get through the whips and have a bit of a whip down. And I kind of have. The um, the sock was a quick win. I can, I can tick that off. I'm actually not closing that project page um, on Ravelry. I'm going to leave it as a whip because as I said, that's where I'm storing all my information about my vanilla sock recipe. So it's technically not finished because I haven't found my perfect recipe quite yet. Um, and as soon as that finishes, I will be working on riches. So, side note, I'm going to lump socks in with the blankets as a never-ending whip that you don't count towards your actual whip count. But instead of picking up my colour affection and working on that, or my mittens, which would also have been fairly quick to complete, I have a new cast on. This is my bag from Odd Knits Adventures. And in here I have some cotton yarn, which is not something that I work with very often. Let me just grab it all out so I can show you. So there we go, it's these three colours. Um, I think it's slate green, lipstick pink and champagne white. And this is paint box cotton DK. And you may remember these, I think I showed them off on an earlier episode. Um, because these are to make the watermelon booties by Olivia Kent. And this is what I have so far. It doesn't look much like a booty, does it? <laughs> um, the reason that I decided to cast these on, start these, I'm never sure what to call that when it's crochets, it's, it's not a cast on, chain on, start. Um, the reason I decided to start these is because these are a first birthday present and that first birthday is going to be in May. So I want to get these done ideally before we go away to Cornwall so that I can get them all wrapped up and ready to go and they're not going to be a last minute stress. So I actually did the, the base of the foot last night and then I had to do it twice because I was watching a film as I do on a Friday night and just wasn't paying enough attention. And I'm not entirely sure if these look right. This is the first time I've crocheted anything that isn't a blanket. So I don't actually know if this looks right. I'm fairly certain I need to rip out this white row and do something a bit different. And I'm hoping I can get them finished this weekend and figure out if they actually do look like booties or if they're just weird. If they do, <laughs> I fully intend to make a few pairs and put them away because they make really, really good presents um, for babies. So it's always good to have a few things stashed away. But yeah, at the moment it looks kind of like a boat. I don't know. They're adorable, so if I can get them right, they are going to look absolutely adorable and I'm sure my friend and her little one will love them. And it's cotton and it's really, really soft and it's going to be really breathable should the sun ever come back. Um, so yeah, I think that'd be ideal. I've also got to get some little buttons for them. So what I might do is take them to Cornwall with me because I know there's quite a nice little shop there where I can maybe get some buttons. But yeah, it, it looks like a tiny bowl or a tiny boat. But I, <laughs> I assure you, it is actually a booty. It also looks massive. But babies grow. So as long as it's not too small. <laughs> I really hope that in the next episode I can show you this and be like, look how adorable these little shoes are. Because at the moment, it just looks weird. <laughs> and it's nothing to do with the pattern at all. I think it's me. I don't think it looks right. I don't think I followed it properly. We're going to find out. They're tiny. I'm just going to finish it and see what happens. So yeah, that's kind of all the making I've done this week. And as I said, it's fairly minimal due to being rushed off my feet. 
Unfortunately, you can't knit or crochet while running. Um, I also had to go to the hairdressers and you can't really knit while you're there. I mean, I suppose you could, but you just have like lots of bits of hair everywhere and it's not very nice. Um, and my train has been pretty packed, so I haven't been able to get any knitting done on the train. I've kind of just had my Kindle up to my nose and I've got a lot of reading done. Um, so yeah, it's just been one of those weeks. However, um, again, do you remember last week when I said I needed to get my whip count down and that I also didn't need to buy any more yarn for various reasons? Um, the main one being that I was already slightly overflowing my um, new stash storage solution. I think I needed about an extra draw um, to what I've currently got, so I didn't need any more yarn. Unfortunately, while I didn't need to have more yarn, I definitely did need to get some more yarn um, for two projects that I have in mind. First up, I'm going to show you what I bought when I went to Wild and Woolly. Um, the lovely Anna actually kept everything back. I'd emailed her about needing some two and a half um, mil chow goos, fixed circulars for Magic Loop, and there were a few other things, and um, she put them to one side to me because she's just lovely like that. Um, so yeah, I went in, sorry for the rustling. I really love that she gives you like brown paper bags. It feels very sustainable, and really nice. So that can just go straight into the recycling, which is amazing. Um, yes, <laughs> so I picked up my new um, sock knitting needles. And if these work for me, I'll probably get a couple of pairs of them because they're handy to have. And then I picked up a few extras for my Chow Goo interchangeable set. I love my Chow Goo interchangeable set and I really don't like having tons and tons of needles. So as far as possible, I want to build out this set because um, it keeps everything nice and neat, which I like and I can find things easily. And I realized that the 4.5 and the four mils are needles that I use an awful lot. So I got myself some extra tips. And my plan is whenever I go to cast something on and that size is already in use, is to buy that tip because that obviously means that I use it quite a lot. I think it's quite handy to have two or three of the ones you use a lot. So I got those. I realized I had lost um, one of the end stoppers for the small size cables. So I got some of those because again, super handy. And I got myself an extra cable just because I don't never seem to have enough cables. So I got myself a 55 centimeter one I probably will get a couple of longer ones as well because they're super handy to have and they take up next to no room because I roll them up and put them in the front pocket. But yeah, so I boosted my kit a little bit there and then I decided I need to pick up some more stitch markers. I have a whole tub of these kind of plastic locking ones and they're super useful but when I'm using them um, within my knitting I always worry that they're a bit fat and they're going to cause my stitches to be a bit baggy. So I picked up a little box of those um, light bulb, I guess they're called. You probably won't be able to see them, but they are super, super thin. Um, they're kind of like a safety pin kind of thickness, so they are ideal. The beauty of these, of course, is that they also come in a little tin. It's nice and small, so it means with a bit of luck, I'm not gonna lose them. I can chuck it into my bag and know that they're not gonna go everywhere. Um, I fully embrace the fact that these will, over the course of the year, completely disappear because that is what happens with hair clips, with hair bands, and all those kinds of things. But I'm going to try to keep them in this little tin. Almost lastly, I picked up another set of stitch markers. Um, and these, I was actually inspired by Meanwhile at the Castle um, because when they were doing the gusset decreases, they actually used stitch markers that had the instruction on them. So there was one on one side that said SSK and one on the other side that said knit two together. And that is basically what these are. So there's a make one left, purl two together, knit two together, SSK. Um, there's a little one attached to the light bulb stitch marker to mark your right side. And those are super, super handy. So I had to get those. They're also on a little loop. I really appreciate having these things. Um, I think I'm gonna try and find myself a good sturdy kind of keyring loop to keep all of my stitch markers on because I have quite a few that are almost souvenir type stitch markers. For example, my Katrinkles ones from Stitches West. 
and I want to make sure they are kept as safe as possible. So I think I'm going to just pick myself up a little key ring to keep them all on, like these. And again, they're on the little um, like metal ring they're on is quite slim, so I don't have to worry about them making my stitches baggy or anything like that. To be fair, the plastic ones I have to my I haven't noticed that they've made my stitches baggy, but I always worry. And I, you know, these are pretty, and I like pretty things, and they're only little. So I originally went just to do a bit of a stock up to make sure I had enough needles to pick up some stitch markers, and because how well the sock knitting was going I said to Rich who has been absolutely lovely and taken such an interest in my sock knitting which I really appreciate because knitting's not his thing um, but he has been with me throughout kind of my knitting journey and he knows how hard I tried to knit socks how often I've tried to knit socks and how it has never worked before so he was really there with me and really happy for me and a little while ago I had said you know it's your 30th birthday this year so if you want me to knit you a jumper I will. The very first jumper I knit was actually for Rich um, but I made the mistake of knitting it um, ready for an arctic winter so he probably only wears it once or twice a year because it is just so warm and however much I complain um, when it's cold here it's actually not that cold. So I said I can make you a lighter weight jumper um, for kind of the you know winter to wear under a coat through the winter to wear in, in the spring and on like maybe cooler summer nights um and he was really keen for that uh, but we just never got around to picking yarn and a pattern we will the offer still stands we will get around to it but in the meantime i said i will make you some special 30th birthday socks so i took him along to wild and woolly we stopped off and got brunch along the way and it's a really lovely walk because it was a beautiful sunny day and this is what he chose um, I did not direct him towards the Country Birds collection for West Yorkshire Spinners. Note again how gingerly I say that because it's just such a mouthful for me. <laughs> West Yorkshire Spinners. Um, I did direct him towards this. I pointed out all the different sock yarns and kind of let him let him go. And this is the one he picked. And he picked Mallard. Um, so I'm really looking forward to knitting this up. I think they're going to be beautiful. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is knit my second pair of socks to get my recipe down. And then I have got some kind of plainer yarn um, that he would be quite happy for me to knit him some trial socks out of. And this will be the second pair. So he definitely won't be getting these for his birthday, which is early May. Um, but that's fine. Uh, he's quite happy to wait for it. One of the big presents I've got him we can't actually have until September so as long as these are ready to be worn on that day I think that's fine. I really love the colours in this I think these are going to be really lovely um, and I'm glad he went for something stripy because as I said I have discovered what you mean about striping like it's insanely addictive. <laughs> but that is not all of the yarn I've got um, as you can see, that yarn was needed, that is a gift, so I don't feel bad about that at all. Not that I think you should feel bad about buying yarn, I just mean that I'd kind of looked at my stash and gone, I'd like to work from this. Um, so I don't feel like I just added to it for, you know, just wanting stuff. Um, it's definitely something that I want to knit up fairly quickly. And I actually think there's no problem with how you stash. If you say one week, no, 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 I'm not going to buy anymore, and then the following week you see something that you love and you want to buy it, go ahead. At the end of the day, as long as you can afford it and it's making you happy, go ahead. You know, that's do you. For me, I want to keep my stash nice and small, just because of a space consideration and because I don't have as much time to knit as I would like. So I want to really feel like I'm working through the stuff I have. However, um, there is a particular project that I want to work on and I needed yarn for it. Um, now this is my very first secret project. This project is not going to get really any airtime on the podcast because I know that the person that I'm making this for watches the podcast. So what I will probably do is every week film a little bit about it and then once it's been gifted, I will give you a big recap of the process but I can show you the yarn. There you go. It is more of the paint box cotton DK and I have got the light grey, the a little bit of dark grey, 
some really gorgeous bright sunshiny yellow, some paler yellow and some white. This is actually going to become a crochet project and I am super excited to work on it. I really like the stitch definition on Paintbox Cotton DK. The tiny little booties that I'm working on look so crisp and really, really lovely. And I just think this is going to be gorgeous crocheted up. And this yellow is lovely. Um, but yeah, this is the last time you're going to see this project until it's finished and then you will see everything speeded up in one go. But now let's move on to Knit and Natter. in whipped up but I have decided to share it in knit and natter because it's you know it's not quite a whip yet it's a lot of like bubbling away in the brain and it's also not knitting yes that's right this week's knit and natter is going to be about sewing so that was all of my yarn purchases over the last couple of weeks but last Saturday I actually went out with some friends to go fabric shopping now sewing is not my forte it's not something I do a great deal of or at all, to be honest. I took textiles as a GCSE, and I do have a sewing machine, but unfortunately life has got in the way a little bit, and I haven't been able to set it up. So we moved um, back to London, and we moved in with my family, and there wasn't the space to have my sewing machine out all the time. And then when we moved here into our flat, we didn't have our dining table. It was staying with a friend um, who was very kindly putting it up for us. But we recently went and picked that up, so now I have space, and I'm very, very excited to have a go at sewing. I am not very good at sewing. Um, my textiles project um, was a very long time ago, and I adored it. I absolutely loved it. Knitting has kind of taken that place, and I'm really keen to get back into that fabric place again. So I went along with a bunch of friends, and I knew what I was looking for. I had a very set idea. I wanted to make the um, Agnes top by Tilly and the Buttons, but I wanted to do her dress hack. Now the Agnes top is one of my make nine for this year, and I actually thought, what I really want is some dresses. I want some really cute little dresses that I can wear with leggings, boots, and a cardigan in the winter, and that I can wear, you know, just on their own in the spring, summertime. So, even though I did say the Agnes was going to be one of my make nine, I am going to count the Agnes dress. Uh, I'm hoping to get some Agnes tops done as well, because they're super handy and they look like really good wardrobe staples. But the dress is what I wanted first. So I was looking for jersey and I was specifically looking for um, ditzy print jersey. And the reason for this is um, several years ago, I decided that I needed to be more mature and chic and stylish and that the only way to do that was to get rid of all my cute little ditzy print dresses. And I bitterly regret that because I never felt more myself than in a floral. Um, I'm not really into very large floral prints, but I like the teeny tiny little flower prints. They make me really, really happy and I never really found anything in the shops that I liked. So in the last couple of years, I have been really trying to change my clothes buying habits. I have been trying to spend my money on fewer things, um, but of a better quality so that they will last longer. Unfortunately, I haven't found anything that fits that criteria and has the fun floral prints that I stupidly ejected from my wardrobe. So I haven't been able to replace them. So my thinking was that I would um, go out and find fabric of this kind and would then be able to make the dresses that I wanted. Unfortunately, I didn't actually find anything that really um, captivated me enough to buy while I was out. We went to Goldhawk Road and I saw a lot of beautiful fabrics but they were either not jersey <laughs> or they were jersey and I wasn't wildly keen on them. I did buy um, some pins and some fabric pencils, which are essentials. <laughs> so I did get a little something, but I did come home a little bit despondent um, because this weekend, Rich is away on the stag do. So I have the um, flat to myself and can make as much racket with the sewing machine as I want. And I was a little bit disappointed because I didn't have anything to work on. I decided to have a look online and see if I could find anything there, but unfortunately it was all a little bit out of my budget. Not to say that I couldn't find anything reasonably priced, um, but I was looking for something on the cheaper end of the scale purely because 
I'm not really a sewer, um, uh, or a sewist is that is what you call it, and I'm not massively comfortable with my sewing machine, with um, cutting out you know, patterns, with sewing things, with making things that will fit my body. So I wanted to spend a little bit less while I work up that confidence. And for me, that is just how I learned to knit and to crochet. I started off with um, quite cheap acrylics. Um, until I was comfortable with the stitches. I then move up to more premium acrylics, uh, which I still use today because I think they have a fantastic place for baby garments, children's clothes, blankets, you know, things like that. Things for um, people who are non-knitters and who need something that is easy to care for. So that's kind of what I wanted to do with fabric. I wanted to get something that was nice quality, um, but wasn't going to break the bank and wasn't going to make me feel really annoyed if I didn't go quite to plan. And that that is something I couldn't find. If you've got any top tips for where I can find stuff like that, I would be really, really grateful. Um, but I was chatting to Rich and he was like, where did you get all that fabric last time? And I was like, what fabric? And he said, don't you remember? We went to um, like a big marketplace and there was lots of fabric shops and you, you bought some stuff. And I, for the life of me, cannot remember where this market is. It was before we moved to Portsmouth, so we're looking kind of in, I don't know, 2015 maybe, late 2015. And I vaguely remember this now that he's mentioned it, but I have no idea where this market was. Absolutely none. But as he was talking about it, I went, hang on, one of the tubs in my cupboard has that fabric in. And lo, we have fabric. <laughs> um, this doesn't quite fit my criteria. From what I remember, I was looking for floral prints again <laughs> when I went to this market. Wherever it was, it was somewhere in London, I don't know. Um, it was definitely nowhere I've been before or since. But I did find some really nice jerseys. So I've got this teal and this beautiful violet. And I think both of these are going to become Agnes dresses because even though they're solids, they are colours that I absolutely love and I will definitely get a lot of wear out of them. And I don't remember them being particularly expensive, but it was so long ago now, they're basically free. <laughs> That's how it feels. I mean, this thank you Nikki of the past. So these two are going to be Agnes dresses and I want to try and get one sewn up to take to Cornwall for Rich's birthday. I would love to have a special kind of birthday dress to wear, but... I don't know, let's, you know, let's just say I will be working on it and we will, I will try and we will hope. I've also got this red that's kind of like a sweatshirt material. Um, it's a very thin sweatshirt material but it is super cosy and it's kind of a little bit um, softer on the other side and smoother on, on the, the front side, top, bottom. I don't really know how you talk about fabric, um, so this is very much a learning curve for me but it is a gorgeous red. I don't wear a lot of red, but this is so gorgeous. And I think that I might make a cocoa top. If I have enough, I'd love to make a tunic out of this because I think this with leggings um, would be such a lovely thing to wear around the house and would be a really gorgeous thing to wear in the winter. So can you imagine this with a pair of black leggings and some brown boots in the winter? How Christmassy and amazing would it be? So those were all jerseys, and then, right at the bottom of the tub, was this. And it is a woven cotton, and it's it's quite stiff, like it's not, there's not loads of drape in it, but I guess that's just a woven thing, I guess. Um, but it has got this beautiful pattern on it. It's all little flowers, and it is just my speed, and it's gorgeous and if this was jersey I would be making an Agnes out of this because it would be absolutely perfect. As it is, <laughs> it is not jersey so I'm not really sure what to do with it. I don't think it would make a great dress just because I like to have a lot of movement, you know, up here. I like to be able to stretch and move and, you know, not feel too constrained and I I don't think I have anything that I wear on my top half that is not stretch in some way. Um, I'm racking my brains about things that I have on my bottom half that aren't stretch. I really like stretch fabric. Um, 
But I'm going to have a look through Love at First Stitch, um, which I which I do have already um, by Tilly and the Buttons, to see if maybe there is a cute skirt that I could make because I think this um, maybe with one of these tops tucked into it would look really really cute. And I again I could wear it with sandals in the summer or you know leggings and boots in the winter. But yeah, if you know of any good woven cotton patterns, let me know. Uh, I think if I've got anything left, I might do a project bag so I can practice, you know, inserting a zip maybe. I've actually just gone and grabbed my copy of Love at First Stitch, um, which I've had for ages. And there's this skirt, which is the Delphine. Maybe that could work, maybe, I don't know. I'd have to have a proper read to make sure that that was the appropriate fabric. Um, Fabric choices is something that I really struggle with because I don't really understand anything about fabric. It's not quite like um, yarn in that sense, which is just a shame. I wish it was more transferable. There's also the Clemence skirt, which I think is absolutely lovely and I would definitely, definitely wear this to death. So that's two options. I also did treat myself to stretch. This is so up my alley. As I said, I really love wearing stretch fabrics. I love being cozy and comfortable. And all of these patterns in here, I'm just having a quick flick through. All of these are things that I would make. Um, I think this outfit in particular with the pinafore dress and the stretch top is just gorgeous. It's just so, so, so my speed. I have kind of a secret desire to make this for New Year. This is the Joni dress with a sequin skirt and a velvet top. And I would absolutely love to be able to make something like this. I would absolutely love to be able to pull something like this off by the end of the year. So, wish me luck. So yeah, as you can see, despite the fact that I did not get a great deal of actual creative work done, I didn't get any knitting, I didn't get any sewing done, um, really, it has been a fairly good week for inspiration. I do think that is kind of the best thing though sometimes when you are having a really crazy week and you don't have the time to sit down and to knit and to sew and to do the things that make you happy I haven't even had time to sit down and fill out my bullet journal at the end of most days so that's kind of something that I'm going to catch up on this evening when I get home but even when you don't have time to do that it's quite nice when your brain is ticking over and figuring things out so that when you do have the time you literally just have to sit down and go. So I'm really looking forward to tomorrow and having a go at sewing myself a dress and goodness knows if I have just massively overstepped the mark and started running before I can walk but I'm going to give it a go. Um, I'm going to give it a go and we'll see how, how it goes. Spoiler alert for next episode, there will be sewing. I am super excited to try something new, to learn a new skill but at the same time I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> Um, with knitting and crochet you can pull back if you really need to, um, you can always go back and fix your mistakes. I feel comfortable enough now with the kind of knitting and to some extent crochet that I do to be able to figure out ways of correcting mistakes without having to rip back. So that is, that is really really good and it's actually kind of making me a bit nervous about sewing because I don't have that confidence with sewing at all. Um, I knit when I was very young and although I did um, sewing at textile level, never to the extent that I knitted. So I don't really have anything to draw on and I am almost a complete and utter beginner. I haven't sewn anything since I think I made a skirt in 2014 um, and that didn't go so well either. So um, I just feel kind of nervous because once you cut the fabric, if you've cut the wrong thing, you can't, you know, put the fabric back together again and, and try again. And if you sew it wrong, you can, you know, really wreck things. So I feel a little bit nervous about that. But as I said, it's been a really long and busy week. And tomorrow I have no plans beyond going for a run. So I'm hoping to get up fairly early, go for a run, have a really nice bowl bath and lunch and then sit down and just sew and just get the pieces cut out and follow all the instructions. And I do have the um, online class, online course for the Agnes. 
So I'm going to pull that up and, and watch that as well. So I'm gonna have a lot of hand holding through this process. I'm definitely not going to just go for it on my own and, and you know start cutting and sewing and figuring things out. But I'm really hoping it goes well. I'm really hoping that I have something that I am happy to wear for Rich's birthday or at all because let's face it we're going away next Saturday and I might not get it done in time um, any tips for getting things done quickly oh, let me know um, but ho I'm just hoping to find something that I can I can wear and that I makes me proud however I have wanted to sew for so long <laughs> so so long and um, I have seen so many people um, I need to stop saying so don't I I have seen many people making beautiful garments and I would really, really love to do the same. And it's just about taking that first step. It's about being brave. It's about cutting into the fabric because in order to be good at something, you've kind of got to be bad when you start off. So I'm embracing that and tomorrow I will do some sewing. So by the time this um, video goes up, I will have started, hopefully. Um, it will hopefully have been going quite well. Uh, we'll probably share on Instagram, so do have a look over there if you would like to see what I'm getting up to and what my progress is like. But that's it for this week. I am going to go and put everything away now so that when I come back, the flat is not completely trashed. Um, and then I'm going out to enjoy some lovely Harry Potter with friends. I wish you an absolutely lovely nitty couple of weeks. I will see you for another cup of tea when I am back from Cornwall. Take care, till then, bye.